wish to make this statement uh, in my capacity as Taoiseach of Ireland. This morning, I was proud to become the first Taoiseach to chair a meeting of the UN Security Council. Climate change is the defining challenge of our time. It is an existential issue for humanity. From the Sahel to the Horn of Africa, from Haiti to Myanmar, we see that climate change drives instability and indeed undermines peace. And that's why Ireland brought climate and security to the top table of global diplomacy during High Level Week, a week when the eyes of the world are trained on the United Nations and on the Council. Secretary General Guterres again showed us today that at the very top of this organization, we have a leader who recognizes the enormity of this issue for the Security Council as well as the United Nations as a whole. We also heard the searing testimony of Ilwad Elman bringing further clarity to the link between climate and security and the deep impact it is already having on people's lives. She left me in no doubt that climate change is affecting the fragile security of Somalia, just one of the many examples discussed today. The Security Council can do more to address the impact of climate change on security. It must do more. The evidence is clear. 80% of UN peacekeepers are now deployed to countries most exposed to climate change. This council first began talking about the links between climate and security some 15 years ago. Today's debate was an important step, but I believe the time for talking has passed. Now is the moment for this council to act. It is time to act for those watching their arable land disappear into encroaching desert, forcing farmers and herders to compete for ever-diminishing resources. It's time to act for the force commander of a complex UN peacekeeping mission struggling to cope with extreme weather events and climate change happening before their very eyes. It is time to act for the Pacific Island nation facing an existential threat of sea level rise. These impacts are wide-ranging. They go to the heart of the issues which this Council grapples with every day. One thing is for sure, they will be with us for years to come. We must act now to ensure we are ready. For this reason, in the coming days, Ireland will convene a discussion on a thematic Security Council resolution on climate and security. We know not all Council members are of one mind on this. My ask is that all Council members engage constructively in this discussion. My hope is that by working together, we can reach a shared understanding of how the Security Council can meet the challenge of climate and security. There is no time to waste. Thank, Thank you very much Mr. indeed. Schiller, the first question, we're going to go to James Bays from Al Jazeera. Thank you very much. You heard the Russians and the Chinese, they didn't come at ministerial level. What do you make of what they say? And given they're both permanent members of the Security Council, doesn't that mean that your efforts to get a resolution are already doomed? Uh, no, well, first of all, I think um, the, there was a very strong support uh, for uh, our resolution today right across the Security Council. I thought it was very consistent in terms of the messages and the acceptance of the link between climate and security. Now, as I have said, not everybody uh, is of the same view, uh, and so we will, we, we, we will now engage with all members, including the ones that you've just uh, referenced there, and we're going to engage in good faith, and all, in my view, will listen and, and will engage, and we will try to persuade uh, people to, to, to in, in what, in our opinion, uh, is an obvious link now between uh, climate and security. Thank you, Tisha. The second question to Edie Denner from the Associated Press. Uh, thank you very much, Tishuk. Um, a follow-up to James's question. Um, how do you answer uh, the Russian and Chinese contention that climate change should be addressed as a whole issue and not be compartmentalized and that they view this as uh, trying to politicize the uh, climate issue? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I would not see this as an attempt to politi politicize the climate issue. I think we saw from the testimony of Ilwad Elman today, and indeed others that I've met during the week, uh, the obvious linkage now between uh, climate and security and the impact of people on the ground, the impact on our peacekeepers, and the link to conflict. 
um, and as a factor in conflict. Not the only factor, but as a factor um, in conflict. So climate change, it, it was accepted as a universal issue facing man, humankind. So it's, uh, it makes sense that the very high level of diplomacy that the Security Council clearly, the highest level represents, should uh, engage and deal with this issue. A final question, Tishik, from Ibidasan from Al Arabi newspaper. Um, thank you. My name is Ibtisam Azim from Al Arab Al Jadid newspaper. So my question is uh, simple. Now what? You, you, you talked about the countries that are agreeing on the issue of climate that is important. <coughs> we have been here before. We have all these promises that we heard before. But as a matter of fact, even countries who agree that we have a serious problem, climate problem, uh, are not delivering what they should do. So which practical steps uh, are you going to take with your other partners in order to uh, reach what you are promising? How can people believe what leaders are promising? Thank well, you. Uh, well, as an experienced politician who's been, you know, seen um, policy evolve, I, I actually get a sense that there's far greater consensus on climate change in the last while than there has been. I get the sense that there's a greater urgency about it globally, and that there's no hiding place now for any country in terms of pretending that climate change isn't a reality. I think some of the contributions today for Anthony Blinken, for example, in referencing what happened in New York in this city uh, a short while ago in terms of the levels of rainfall in Central Park. Um, right across Europe, um, we had some horrendous events uh, during um, the summer uh, and across the globe. Uh, so I actually think politics is moving faster. Uh, obviously, there will be uh, barriers and, and, and struggles, and even within Europe, you know, we'll, we will have very significant meetings in the time ahead. But we, we are making very significant progress compared to perhaps uh, a, a decade ago or five years ago, even. Um, and you know, we've been we have experience of conflict on, on our own island. Um, there were times when people said, "You will never make progress." Um, I grew up never thinking we'd have a Good Friday Agreement in Ireland, but we did. People changed position. One cannot go through life on the basis that you think people are not going to change their position. The whole essence of diplomacy is to pursue, to persist, to persevere, uh, and ultimately change the paradigm. Um, and in my view, uh, I've witnessed in the last while a far greater collective approach on climate change than I have for some time. And I think that momentum is going to pick up. Uh, and likewise on the climate security debate, yeah, I've, I've heard of all of the contributions today, uh, but people don't always have fixed positions forever. People change their positions, um, and that's our job. That's our obligation to, to engage in discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week. Unfortunately, we have no more time. There's a lot of Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everybody.